What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. We're getting the Mini X loaded up into my Diamond C trailer. And I wanted to make this video to kind of recap ownership of this Diamond C trailer. And we're also gonna be putting it to use today. Now I have owned this trailer for a few months and this is actually my second Diamond C trailer. First I bought my 2022 Diamond C LPT, which is a low profile dump trailer. Uh, and I'm assuming the T stands for the telescopic because these are telescopic dump trailers as opposed to scissor lifts which scissor lifts are the ones that you see kind of underneath the body of the dump box, whereas the telescopic lift, just like the big dump trucks, is mounted up front here. And it's that big telescopic pole that goes up. So I bought the 2022 thinking like, this is my absolute dream trailer. Finally had enough money to purchase my dream trailer and I only wanted to buy a trailer once. As you guys know, Diamond Seas are, they're very pricey trailers, right? These are kind of the cream of the crop when it comes to dump trailers. So what a lot of people will do is they'll start with a cheaper trailer and then you realize either you break it, destroy it, or for whatever reason, it's just not for you and you slowly upgrade and eventually you end up in, in a higher end trailer like this. Not always, but that seems to be the trend that I have seen. But to me, I like to kind of skip steps, right? Instead of buying four trailers to get to the one that I want, let me just save up the money and buy the one that I want right off the bat instead of spending a bunch of money on a bunch of different trailers. So I did a ton of research before jumping into a Diamond C. Again, it's a ton of money. It's a big investment. You want to make sure you're spending your money wisely. And although I absolutely loved that 2022, like anything, there's some things that I thought could have been improved. And well, of course, just my luck with the 2023s, they basically improved on every single complaint that I had in the 2022. And that's the reason I upgraded to the 2023 behind me, which is almost identical, other than I opted for just about every Gucci option you could put on this 2023. We'll go over a few of the changes from 22 to 23 real quick. The telescopic hydraulic ram. Now this compared to the scissor lift, these are notoriously slower, albeit they are much, much stronger. I have loaded the crap out of this thing and we are going to do it again today we're, we're definitely going to be overloading this trailer a couple of times today and it has never not dumped whereas i've seen tons of scissor lift dump trailers that the load's too far forward it's too heavy and they just they have no power to get it up and then you're jumping in there and you're hand shoveling out your load which is just miserable these things are very stout but they were notoriously slow well diamond c fixed that when they upgraded to the new hydraulic pump system that's right there they actually worked directly with the manufacturer of this whole system to pair it perfectly with their RAM and it is significantly faster. We've done a few compare and contrasts. We actually put this trailer next to my 2022 and it, it's a big difference, especially when you're doing this multiple times a day, the time adds up. The other thing is on this neck, obviously the 2022 to 23, you get this big old beefy neck, which allows for this ginormous toolbox as opposed to just the little triangle one that went on the tongue of the 2022 this thing is massive and i love it obviously the tarp system we're going to see that a little bit later but this tarp system is just completely renewed it actually makes you want to use the tarp instead of finding an excuse to not use it uh one of my favorite features are these latches right here which keep these doors open the old school way there was a little chain holder that you kind of slid a chain into something similar to that and then you hooked it onto the door. You had to go looking for the chain. You didn't want to leave the chain hanging off the side of the trailer all the time in case it fell off while you're driving. It was just an unnecessary thing, right? Like there had to be a better way. And well, they came up with it with this little latch system right here. And it honestly, and it auto latches, which is nice. On the back, I added the rear stabilizer jack. So those you just drop down real quick. And you can see when I was loading it earlier, it doesn't allow the front of the trailer to pick up, which makes loading way less sketchy. It doesn't end up flexing the suspension on your truck in all kinds of weird ways. And one of the sketchiest things that can happen if you don't have something like this, is you can end up taking all the weight off of those rear wheels of your truck. And if you're on a slope, pretty much your rear wheels when you're in park, that's what's holding the truck there. So if you take all the weight off the bed of the truck and the wheels start to pick up off the ground, you, the trailer, and your piece of equipment are going flying down that hill. So having those jacks is nice because it eliminates that from happening. One of the other options I opted for was the sideboard extensions. So basically this two by six is like a, it's a sacrificial layer, right? If you're loading with a skid steer or anything, I mean really, and you drop something here or the bucket slaps, it's gonna slap this piece of wood, tear the piece of wood up. When it's all jacked up, you swap it out for a new piece of wood and you are good to go. When I bought my 2022, obviously I bought it right off the lot. So the, Whatever options the dealer put on, that's what I was stuck with. Now I was worried 
that I wasn't gonna be able to close the door on the Mini X. It's also why, well, one of the reasons I went with the two foot sides versus the three foot or the four foot was I wanted to be able to close the door on the Mini X, not have to leave it open while we are transporting or anything like that. And you can see the door clears these boards perfectly. So it was a good option to go with. Back up front, you guys know, cause I talk about it in every freaking video with this trailer, the hydraulic tongue jack. I will never order another trailer without one of these things. It is just, it just makes life so much easier. My last trailer, especially with this hitch combo, and I know a lot of people comment on this hitch combo. The reason we have the uh, Demco hitch so far up is because when we hook it up to the 450, that's where it likes to be. And when I'm hauling the heaviest, it's usually hooked up to the F450. We could probably drop it one and still not be too funky on the 450, but that's where she sits right now. It does make the hitch when we're running it on the 6.0 a little bit funky. And I do admit that is a little hokey and a little sketchy. However, those Gen Y hitches are rated to run as either a drop hitch where that portion goes down or uh, I don't know, a, a raced hitch, I guess is the right word for that. This truck though is super low. It's a two wheel drive, 6.0 with no airbags in the rear. Plus, you know, there's a good amount of tongue weight on these shorter dump trailers. So it just kind of squats down a little bit. It's a little bit funky looking up here. Speaking of a lot of tongue weight because of a short trailer, I opted for a 14 foot trailer. The reason being was I thought it was the smallest that I could comfortably get the Mini X in without having to finagle it, turn the boom sideways and do all kinds of weird stuff. I was sick of bringing my 24 foot deck over around just to drop the Mini X off on a job site, considering that trailer is 30 foot long and we're usually in some pretty tight neighborhoods. In Dang old fly, get out of here. So as you can see, we have the backfill blade on the Mini X. Still got a little bit of room. I'm trying to obviously keep most of the weight above the axles while still having plenty of tongue weight. And well, we definitely know we have plenty of tongue weight. But even then, I mean, I could pitch the boom sideways, but there's no point. We're not sticking out really. We're about two and a half, maybe three foot max, which we're allowed up to three feet. But for my type of work and what we do, I think it is the perfect size trailer. But for those of you that are on the fence, because I bought this without knowing if the Mini X was going to fit perfectly, 14 foot holes in E32 just is fine. Now we're going to be hauling a bunch of dirt out today and that is a ton of weight and it's been moist out. We've had a little bit of rain. It's been humid. So the dirt's probably wet, which makes it even heavier. And if you guys don't know, like dirt in these things is probably one of the heaviest things you can put in them. Obviously like concrete's pretty dense, but there's going to be little air holes if you're throwing a bunch of broken concrete in there. But if you're packing these things full of dirt, they get heavy very fast. And as much as I love the old 6.0 and she's been running good for me and she's been a solid runner for the last few months, I'm nervous on trying to put you know, a full trailer worth of dirt and pull it all the way out to the ranch. Cause we're dumping stuff back at the ranch today because it's just, it's not the greatest dirt and nobody wants it. So to the ranch it goes, but I'm not sure if the 6.0 is gonna be up for the task cause we got some really steep grades to bring stuff out to the ranch. So we might be swapping to Papa Rhino's 450 uh, just for the sake of not killing the 6.0. Oh, before we go, I almost forgot. One of the other upgrades I did on the trailer was I went from drum brakes to electric over hydraulic disc brakes. And that is a, huge improvement on braking and stopping when you have these things fully loaded down. Only issue is though, the stock brake controller on the 6.0 did not like the electric over hydraulic and it just didn't really recognize them properly or the feedback between the two. So they weren't working properly. So even though we got this fixed and I loved having the factory brake controller working properly, unfortunately it just wouldn't talk to this trailer. So we ended up having to go with this Prodigy brake controller, it's the Prodigy P2 and you can switch over between just electric and electric over hydraulic. So the way you do it is you uh, press the brake down, I believe, and then let me see if I remember how to do this. Hold down the boost button. We'll go to another thing here. There we go. Hold release. Hold it down again. Hold it back down again. It'll go to, there we go. E is for electric. Tap it again. Electric over hydraulic. We slide the little bar on the bottom and we are now set. Electric over hydraulic. Good to go.
All right, we'll do a quick trailer slash truck swap so Papa Rana can get out of here. Let's get this first load loaded up. Now when you're doing jobs like this, especially when you've got like only so much space in your dump trailer, it becomes real tempting to just like, we'll just keep piling it on. Let me try to get it to two trips. However, like with dirt, you really run the risk of just being so heavily overloaded, like you're gonna break something. One of the reasons I spend the money to go with a nicer trailer like the Diamond C is because I know I'm gonna overload it. I know I'm gonna exceed the weight capacity at times on the trailer, and I want a trailer that's built better to where I stand a better chance of when I do that, whether it be accidentally or on purpose, the trailer's not just gonna buckle in half. I've seen tons of dump trailers out there where you start to load them a little bit heavy and the axles just go and bend in half. And then like your trailer's pretty useless until you cut those out and put new ones on. So while I'm tempted to load more than this, I think we might just call this good. Now, this material is actually much nicer than I remember. And this would work great at the restaurant project as fill we really don't want to put that crap that's there back into the plumbing trenches but nobody really wants to pay us to import uh new material so i'm contemplating taking this over to the restaurant we'll pay to export the crappy material that's there all righty let's show you guys how easy the tarp system is to put on you just turn the handle out and it's all spring loaded i mean the tarp practically like unwinds itself go you want a little pull the tightener back up put your handle in so you know your legal width now the only issue i can see with my plan to take this to the restaurant project is i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get the trailer into the back parking lot to be able to dump this it's a very narrow alley this is obviously a pretty long setup all righty gps is telling me it's 41 minutes to go back to the ranch so that just puts into perspective hour and a half round trips uh add two hours for us to load up and all that so two hours every trip to go to the ranch, which is why it's expensive to go to the ranch to dump stuff, even though you're not technically paying dump fees to get rid of the stuff. Now I just checked and we were only 16 minutes to the restaurant. Oh, decisions, decisions. If I get there and there's no room and I can't get the trailer in, like this is all for nothing. All right, screw it y'all, I'm doing it. We're going to the restaurant. This is gonna save me a ton of time if I can get just one load dropped there, then take the next one out to the ranch and then there'll probably be a little cleanup load after that. All right, we made it over to the restaurant project. And the main reason I'm even attempting this is because I knew the little baby Mini X is still here. So if I couldn't get perfectly in, we could move the dirt with this and kind of throw it in further. But it's looking like we're gonna be able to back kind of straight in. We'll just pitch the trailer and we'll probably end up dropping it all right here. Alrighty, now we'll bring the tarp up. Again, everything is spring loaded, kind of like your garage door, so it takes the weight off of it. Dude, now that we came here, we probably could have loaded this thing a little bit heavier and just got rid of a lot of it here. But you can see this is gonna be a lot nicer in the plumbing trenches than this stuff, which we kind of took out in big clumps. And once you get clumps like that, like, yeah, this will dry out eventually, but then we gotta break the clumps up to even be able to move it with a shovel to put it back in the plumbing trenches like it's just not ideal material
Well, we did pretty good. There's just a tiny little bit that came out in the alley. So we'll jump on the little baby excavator, pull that back inside, throw our straw waddle back up, and we are out of here. Now, if we compare the pile of what I brought, this little, this little, this little booger right here, compared to the giant pile of stuff that, like, we really don't want to put back in, I think we could bring another load over here at least. <laughs> Maybe all of it. I don't know. We're gonna load up another load. I'm gonna load it heavier this time, knowing that we're just coming to this short distance, and we're gonna, we're gonna bring another load over here. Man, is that a good looking truck and trailer combo. Okay, back for round two. This time we kept the truck a little bit further down in the driveway, so we shouldn't have to run into the risk of that thing touching the ground. I do like to always chalk the wheels though, even though we have the parking brake on on the truck, but that's a lot of weight at a very steep angle pushing down. Jump back in the Mini X, let's get load number two. All right, put a decent amount more this time than we did last time. Should have no problem hauling this over there. And then I'm hoping, I'm hoping we're shooting for one more load and I'm hoping it's not one of those ones where I like have to throw a couple little extra scoops on there just because we're that close to being done and if, and we end up having to really overload just to call it quits and be done. But we're gonna find out when we get back because the next load's going out to the ranch. Now, another thing I upgraded on this trailer is not only the axles to the oil bath axles, which some people say like they prefer the non-oil bath axles. We'll see if I ever have issues with these, but so far they've been all right. But I also upgraded the tires. That was like the one point that always worried me about my last Diamond C trailer. Again, knowing I'm gonna overload it at times was a tire blown out because the tires just weren't rated for the weight that I was putting into the trailer. So we upgraded to these tires. I, I don't even honestly remember what they are. G rated, H rated, F rated whichever way is the heavier weight rated. But these bad boys were significantly upgraded for the last trailer. And on my last trailer, if I was making this tight of a turn with this much weight in the trailer, the axles, one axle would have been this way, the other axle would have been like that way. Like you, you see that on most trailers. These things dang near are perfectly in line. There's a little bit of deflection, but I think it's honestly because we're up on a hill. But these axles are just so much more stout than I had on my 2022. <laughs> Here's to hoping that this is the third and final load. Oh, Cause timing will work out great to take it back to the ranch. But if we gotta go for one more, we're just not gonna have time to do it today. Now I already know there's gonna be comments telling me I need to buy a dump truck. I don't enjoy trucking material back and forth all day long. Like that's just not me. I'd rather pay somebody to do it. The reason I bought this dump trailer is for jobs that we only need five yards or 10 yards or we need pallets of block brought in. Obviously with Papa Rhino's truck, I didn't want him having to put pallets of block in the back of that truck and jack that whole truck up. Whereas with the Kodiak, he had the big flatbed on the back. He could stack two, three, four pallets on that thing, no problem. So that's the main reason I wanted a dump trailer. And for the stuff at the ranch, you know, I need three yards, five yards of something. We can bring it ourselves without having to pay out the butt for some trucking fees. But if there's like a big import export job, uh, I would rather pay to have some truckers come out and move it for me. That way I can stay in the machine all day long. If I gotta load the stuff, jump in the truck, drive across town, unload it, drive back, like it just eats up so much time. Well, we still ended up with uh, a full load. I mean, we probably could put a couple more buckets in here, but for the trip we're taking, I feel like this is about as full load as I wanna be. Okay, well, we made it to the ranch. Now, the only issue is clearly we are losing daylight. So we're gonna dump this really quick. Um, we're actually gonna be starting our next project probably, let's see, tomorrow's Labor Day, we'll take, finally take a day off, but 
the next day we're gonna jump on the new project. And that's gonna end up being right here. We're gonna need some dirt. This is actually just gonna be to fill in this big drainage swell that kind of opens up right here and prevents us from driving this way, like, smoothly. You guys gotta kind of sketchily drive across this big old, this little ravine that opens up here. So we'll use some of this to fill that in because it's nice and kind of sandy and rocky and water should drain through it well. But we gotta dump this quick. <laughs> I don't know guys, this, this might have been our heaviest load yet. Or we've just drained the battery from doing this so much today. Not sure what happened, but apparently I uh, cut myself. Somewhere along the lines of getting out of the truck and grabbing the remote. Crazy how tall these telescopic trailers go. Okay, let's pull up. We'll use the trailer lights as lighting for the rest of this video. But I gotta say, after owning this Diamond Sea trailer, well, this is my second one, I am 110% sold on these things. They are about triple the price of what you can get some dumb trailers for. But in my opinion, I would absolutely tomorrow go spend that money again on one of these trailers. I use these things hard. We overloaded the crap out of this thing three times today, allegedly. Allegedly. I mean, we were yeah, totally air dirt. We were totally within spec. But allegedly overloaded this thing three times today on, especially, and that last trip to the ranch, like that's no easy fate for a lot of vehicles and or trailers. And this thing just handles flawlessly. So I just wanted to give you guys an update on the trailer, on my thoughts on the trailer, how it's been owning it. And because when, anytime we're hooking it up to the beautiful 450 and putting things to work, it is just, uh, you know, I feel like we got to pull the camera out because it's just too good of a look and setup. But with that, we're going to wrap up as always. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, okay, a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you got to be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. I'm out.